listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. My name is Hannah, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I want to talk about 10 minute rituals to change your life. Now, I'm aware that changing your life is quite a big claim, and I'm not saying that if you do these things, this will happen overnight. What I mean by that is that in my experience, anyway, if you implement these things into your life over time, slowly but surely, you will start to notice shifts in your experience of your life and your experience of yourself. And that is the kind of sustainable change that we really like. So most of us are really, really busy. Life is very hectic. And as much as we'd love to implement drastic lifestyle changes that will bring us closer to the authentic lifestyle that we really want, that isn't happening for most of us. It's just not realistic. Even though we can't make the changes we would like in one fell swoop, that doesn't mean that we should give up completely because there are still many things that we can do to inject a little bit of mindfulness into our daily routine in yummy bite-sized pieces. Each of the suggestions that I'm going to talk about in this episode takes 10 minutes or less. They don't require any fancy schmancy equipment, lots of money, or even a computer. These are offline, portable, authenticity practices. The first one is gratitude notes. Positive psychologists rave about these, and thanks to sites like Gratitude Log and Thanks Thanks Thanks, most people have experienced the warm fuzzy feeling that comes with giving appreciation. Think about anything that you feel grateful for right now and write a little thank you note. Maybe you appreciate the can of Diet Coke for really perking you up, or maybe you appreciate the fact that work is quiet so you can finish a certain blog post before going on holiday. Whatever it is, person, object, or abstract noun, Take a few minutes and show it some love. The second ritual I want to talk about is journaling. There's a misconception around journaling that people who spend hours doing it, pouring over their moleskin notebooks, staring purposefully into space or typing furiously on their MacBooks in dark coffee shops are doing journaling properly. However, journaling really can be whatever you want it to be. Long rambling paragraphs are fine, but bullet points, lists, spider diagrams and doodles also count, as do many other things. There's no such thing as the, quote, proper way to journal, so go wild and do whatever works for you. The third ritual I want to talk about is sentence completion. Sentence completion is a way of exploring our associations and thought patterns. Starting with the first part of a sentence, also called the sentence stem, you then finish it off using five to ten different endings. I found sentence completion hugely helpful in my own personal development, and I've actually created a four-week sentence completion course, which is available now through Becoming Who You Are. It's called Four Weeks of Self-Knowledge, and I'll include the link to it in the show notes of this episode. The fourth ritual I want to talk about is relaxation and or meditation. It's pretty amazing how taking five minutes and doing nothing can make all the difference to the rest of your day. A lunch break is the perfect time to do this. Try and find a quiet secluded spot and just close your eyes. Don't get carried away by thoughts, just let them come and go while you notice what emotional and physical feelings are present. If sitting in silence on your own isn't quite your thing, you can find loads of guided meditations available for free through iTunes as podcasts. My personal favorite is Meditation Oasis and they offer a series of meditations around different topics like flowing with change, feeling your emotions, dealing with grief, dealing with anger, uh, a deep relaxation meditation and many, many more that I cannot remember now off the top of my head. Again, you can find the link to that in the show notes of this episode, and I hope you find it helpful. So number five is yoga. If you're just starting out with a yoga practice for the very first time, I definitely recommend that you go to at least a few classes so that you can learn the various poses and learn how they should be done and minimize the risk of injuring yourself further down the road. In the long term, however, you absolutely don't need to go to classes if you can't or don't want to. 
YouTube is a goldmine of DIY videos on how to do just about everything. And you can find everything on there from a full body workout to wrist yoga for people who sit at a desk all day and all these different routines. One of my favorite yoga websites is Yoga Download, which you can find at yogadownload.com. And again, I'll put the link to this in the show notes. And Yoga Download provides full yoga classes, either through audio or video. You can stream them or download them for a, a monthly or annual subscription fee. And they also have a selection of 20 minute classes, which are available for free. There's a huge power in just getting moving and stretching yourself a little bit every day. So try it and see how it feels. The sixth ritual is to unplug for three to five minutes and just sing or dance like you've never sung or danced before. No headphones, no mumbling, no tiptoeing around. It's just one song, so your neighbors will be fine. And just go wild. Really let yourself have a great time. Finally, number seven is a weekly review. This might take longer than 10 minutes, depending on how detailed you want your review to be, but it is incredibly useful. The weekly review involves asking yourself about the best parts of your week and the parts of your week that you would change or do differently if you could go back and do them again. Questions to ask yourself during your review include things like, what would I change about this week if I could? What can I learn for next week? What was I proud of this week? What wouldn't I have done any differently? What got in my way this week? And how could I stop that particular thing getting in my way in the future? The list can also include things like biggest surprise of the week, heartwarming moment of the week, and anything else that you want to create a weekly record of. That's it for this episode. Before we finish, I want to quickly mention something for listeners who are interested in journaling. I just talked about journaling as one of the 10 minute rituals that can change your life. And if you're interested in finding out more about this invaluable personal development practice, I offer a couple of resources through Becoming Who You Are that might help you out. The first is the Ultimate Guide to Journaling, which is available through Amazon and also as an ebook. The ebook is actually read by Stephanie Murphy, who does the intro and outro to this podcast, so you're already really familiar with her voice. The Ultimate Guide to Journaling tells you everything you need to know to start and maintain a regular journaling practice. And inside the book, you can also find more than 100 different prompts and suggestions that you can use to take your practice deeper. The second resource I want to mention is something that I've actually just released, and this is a set of journaling prompts called Living from the Heart. These prompts are divided into four courses which cover different aspects of our life. So working from the heart covers career and work, relationships from the heart covers relationships, emotions from the heart covers emotions, and a lifestyle from the heart covers lifestyle. These are all two-week courses which are delivered daily via email. So each day you get a prompt with an extended discussion about how to make the most out of that prompt. And that prompt is the foundation for that day's journaling practice for you. If that sounds good to you, please head over to www.becomingwhoyouare forward slash tools and check them out. I'll also include links to those courses along with all the other links in the show notes to this episode. Thank you so much for listening today and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life. Thank you.